Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to talk you through setting up a present sensor perfectly for your Apple Home setup. Now, present sensors are some of my favorite types of product for home automation, and they work perfectly with things like smart bulbs for turning on lights when you walk into a room and turning them off when you leave. And present sensors are actually better than motion sensors because they detect that you're present and send a signal based on that, whereas a motion sensor will detect that you're moving. This means setting up the things I'm going to show you in this video with a motion sensor might cause you to be plunged into darkness, but with a present sensor, they won't. Now, natively in the Apple Home app, you can easily create an automation that says when presence is detected, turn on a light. However, a lot of present sensors out there, including the new one from Meros and the Akara FP2, also have built-in light sensors. And realistically, what you want to do with a present sensor is you want to turn on a light if it's dark enough in the room, as well as there being presence. Now you can't have multiple triggers as part of an Apple Home automation out of the box in the Apple Home app, but you can achieve it pretty easily using Siri shortcuts. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to get all of that set up and running. So in order to get a present sensor set up perfectly in Apple Home, uh, we are going to need to create three scenes. We're going to create a scene for when presence is no longer detected. We're going to create a scene for when presence is detected and we're going to create a scene for when the light level drops below a certain level because both the Meros and the Akara FP2 uh, presence sensors also expose a light sensor as well so you can get the light level of a room as well as if there's presence. So the way I like to start off creating any home automation is to check if I've got a scene that controls the devices I want to already. And for the purpose of this video, I have actually already set a couple up. So I've got two scenes here. So I've got a scene called living room lights on and a scene called living room lights off. And basically they will do exactly what they say on the tin. And it also means by creating a scene, I can reuse these in other automations. And the advantage of setting these up as scenes rather than in individual automations is that if I ever wanted to change the mood of my living room or maybe change a light, I haven't got to edit multiple automations. I just edit one scene to update all of that. So I've got my scene set here, one which will turn on the living room lights to the mood that I want and one which will turn them off. So we're next going to go into automations and we're going to hit the plus at the top and we're going to choose add automation. And the first one we're going to do because it is by far the easiest is we're going to do the living room lights off. So a sensor detects something we can choose and we're going to come down here and find the occupancy sensor in my living room. And we're going to hit next. And we want to do when it stops detecting occupancy and we're going to run it at any time whether there's anyone around or not uh, and that's because the Apkara fp2 does have a pet detection feature built in but on the off chance it uh, kind of gets it wrong and the cat sets it off it will still turn off the lights when there's no more presence um, and then on the next thing we're going to choose what happens so we're going to say living room lights off which is that scene and hit next so now we have our scene when there's no occupancy detected in the living room, turn off the living room lights and we just give that a nice sensible name. So let me show you that now in my Apple Home Automation app. And you can see I have actually created the others I'm going to show you in this video already. Um, so here is my presence ended one. And a convention I like to use when creating automations is to put a room name at the start and then a hyphen and then what it does, just because in a nice long list of automations, it makes it easy to find. So here is that automation. Uh, and of course, it's enabled. Uh, so the next one I'm going to show you is when the light level is high. So that, again, is pretty easy. You can do this straight in the Apple Home app by hitting plus and add automation. Um, except this time, we're going to click a sensor to detect something again. But instead of grabbing the occupancy sensor, we're going to grab the light sensor, which is also exposed by the same Akara FP2. And I'm going to hit next. And we want to say when the light level rises above a certain level. So we're going to say 50 lux. And again, we're going to run it at any time and whether people are here or not. Now, you might want to run it just if someone's at home. But because I have a cat sitter who comes along and away, I want them to have light as well. So I'm going to keep that as off. And I'm going to hit next. And again, this time we are going to run living room lights off and hit next. So again, in a similar way to our first automation, we have an automation controlled by the presence sensor, but this time the light sensor built into it. And we're saying when the light level gets above a certain level, turn off the living room lights. And we can name that the same way as before and hit done. Now, because I've already created it, I'm just going to cancel and I will just show you that again. 
So here we go, living room highlight level. And that's exactly the same thing I showed you just now. Now the next one is when presence is detected and presence is detected is slightly trickier. And you can see I've created this already, but I'm gonna walk you through creating this because what we want to do is we don't want to just turn on the light when presence is detected, but we want to say turn on the light when presence is detected and the light level is low enough to make it worth turning on light. Um, and we can't actually do that natively in the Apple Home app, but we can with the help of Siri shortcuts. However, we also can't do that on a desktop. So I'm gonna condense this down and I'm gonna bring up my phone. Now, this is a mirror of my phone thanks to the latest version of Mac OS. So in my phone, I'm gonna to go to Apple Home and I'm gonna hit a plus at the top and I'm gonna choose add automation. And again, I'm gonna choose a sensor to set. And I am going to grab the occupancy sensor because that is the main trigger. And I'm gonna hit next. And we're gonna say when it detects occupancy. And again, we're gonna run it anytime and when people are home. And we're gonna hit next. Now this time, we are also gonna select one of our scenes. So we're gonna select living room lights on this time because we're gonna to want to turn on the lights when motion is detected. But we're not gonna stop there. On the iPhone and not on a Mac OS, we can scroll all the way to the bottom and again, this has to be on your iPhone and we can choose convert to shortcut. And you can see we now have a Siri shortcut here that sets the living room light scene to on. So it triggers this living room scene. But we want to do one more thing. So we're going to pull up here where we've got actions and we're going to choose scripting. And we're going to choose if. Now, if you've ever written any code, this will be very familiar to you, but let me explain it briefly. So if says, uh, if something is true, so if we check something and that's actually true, then we do something and that goes here. Otherwise, we do something else and then we finish. So we can put things above this, we can put things below it like this. So I can grab this and drag it down. Uh, we can also put things in between. So we can put things there by the otherwise or put things here, which is where we want this to be. So we're only gonna run this if something is true. So what do we want to be true? Well, we wanna click condition and we want to select an accessory in our home. And we want to choose the light sensor that is exposed by our occupancy sensor. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna hit done. And now we've got some extra options. So by default, it says if the light sensor name is anything which we don't want, so we're gonna click the name bit. And we're gonna say current light level. And then we've got all of these things we can click as well. So we're gonna say if the current light level is, and we're gonna say if the current light level is less than or equal to, and then we can put a number of lux. So I've experimented with this a bit, so I'm gonna say 15. Um, and the key thing with this to bear in mind is that you want your low levels to be nice and low, and your high level, so the shortcut we set where it turns off the lights, which you'll remember was at 50 lux, to be quite a bit higher. Because what you don't want to do is have it reach the high level when the lights turn on, because obviously you're adding light into your room, and then it'll just turn your lights on and off constantly. So I had to experiment a bit to get that. You might need to experiment with this yourself, depending on the light settings you set. Of course, the easiest way is to get the light level reading from that home app if you want to before you set these up. So you could turn on your living room lights to the set you want and see what the lux level is. So what we've now got is we've got something that says if the light sensor's current light level is less than or equal to 15 lux, then set the living room lights to on. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to do anything, so we just leave this blank and we just ignore this as well. And we can hit next. So you can see, again, this is very similar to that automation thing. So we're saying when occupancy is detected in our living room, which was our main trigger, we then run this shortcut. And of course, this shortcut is what we've just set up, which we can see back here. So we've got this extra check now in this shortcut that says when we've detected occupancy in a living room, is the light level low enough to warrant putting on the lights? And if it is, we put on the lights. And then you can just hit done or give it a name and you're done. So let me jump back to the Mac app and show you this because once you've actually created it on your iPhone or your iPad, you can then edit these on the Mac. So here is the presence detected one we set up and you can see it says do shortcut, which is exactly what we wanted. And I can click that shortcut and see what it does. So again, if the light sensors current light level is less than 15 lux, uh, set the living room lights to on. Now I've actually created something a bit more complicated down here, which you don't want to worry about, but all this does, 
And if you want to know more about this, drop me a message and I'll help you out. But it basically grabs the time and it sets a scene on the Akara light based on the time of day. So if it's late at night, I want some nice kind of galaxy star lights going on. If it's the morning, I just want a normal white light. So it's about setting a bit of ambiance all in the same shortcut. So we've got this kind of nested if going on. But don't worry too much about this. But if this is something you wanted to achieve, so maybe a different light colour based on the time of day, then do drop a comment below and I'll help you out. So that's all we need for a present sensor to work perfectly in Apple Home. These three automations, two very simple ones, one for when presence is ended and one for light level is high. And then this slightly more complicated one, which we've done with a Siri shortcut that does a bit more. So it also checks for light level as well as presence. I hope you guys have found that video helpful. If you have any questions, stick them below. I'll put a link below to all of the tech I use in my smart home as well, so you can see what I use. And all of those links will take you through to Amazon in whichever country you're in. There are affiliate links, so if you make a purchase using one of those, it helps this channel out. And I'm very grateful if you do that. Subscribe if you want to see new videos when they come out. Give this video a like if you found it helpful, and I'll see you guys again soon.